From the moment she felt the call to ministry, Marilyn Hickey faced roadblocks, most of them because she was a woman. And yet she persevered. And nearly a half century later, she's still going strong. Marilyn Hickey is a groundbreaking minister and humanitarian who has never allowed closed doors or difficulties to stop her in her quest to share the gospel. She has traveled to over 137 countries, some of the most dangerous and darkest places of the world, reaching underground churches in nations closed to the gospel. In her book, It's Not Over Until You Win, Marilyn shares the amazing accounts of God's faithfulness in her life and encourages you to hang on to your God-given visions and passions. Well, joining us now for more is Marilyn Hickey, and we welcome you back to the 700 Thank Club. You. It's always a wonderful treat to have you here. Delightful to be here. Thank you for the open door. Well, your, your new book, It's Not Over Until You Win, is filled with so many adventures and stories. <laughs> it is just a joy to read it. But go back, if you will, with me to Vietnam, because you had a remarkable experience there smuggling Bibles. What happened? Well, in Vietnam, we got an open door to go to the rubber plantation. And so the rubber plantation was where over a thousand workers were. Wow. And so we're trying to get Bibles in to them and to get to speak to them. So how do you do it? You know, they're not saying, whoopee, here's a Christian woman yes. and she's going to teach the Bible. Yeah, they... So we took uh, an opportunity to go to Saigon and go out to the rubber plantations. I rode a motorcycle, and, <laughs> not so good, through the rubber trees. And there were a thousand people sitting on the ground. Wow. So what did I do? And there was only one light on the interpreter. So I gave salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, healing, miracles, everything. And then we left after two and a half hours. Our driver was waiting. And he said, uh, the police were just here and they went to get something to eat because you hadn't come out yet. Wow. So we God's came out. timing. Yes. <laughs> At the perfect time. Wow. Amen. You've also had such a tremendous heart for and call to the Islamic nations yes. of the world. You know, those are places that are hard to get into. And a lot of people would be fearful, I think, of making that that move. But for you, God opened doors in amazing ways. I have great favor in the Islamic world and more now because I'm older and they love old women. So, <laughs> Again, God's timing. Right? I just got back from <laughs> Egypt and they come out to the meeting and healing is the dinner bell. Wow. And so we have people healed to give their testimonies and then we get follow up. Yes. So we have a sneaky way to do follow up and begin to establish churches. So let's go back to your childhood because you know there are a lot of people who are in full-time ministry and they could say, well, I was raised in the church. My mom and dad were committed believers, but that wasn't so for you. No. I mean, you really had a tough childhood in some ways. In some ways it was good. I really related to your childhood. You had many good things. Yes. But there were things that were missing as well. Well, we moved to Pennsylvania during the war. My father, you know, began to build ships. And so uh -huh. we had to live with an aunt and uncle because there was, you know, there wasn't housing. You did what you had to and do. And so yeah. this uncle, I was 11 years old, uh, and I didn't know, began to molest me. I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't like it, but I didn't know. So that happened for almost a year. Well, and, and you said he was loved by everybody, that apart yes. from what he was doing oh, to yeah. you, he was this amazing guy that was everybody's buddy. So in a child's mind, where do you go with that? Yeah. And so I didn't, you know, I didn't understand it, but I didn't like it. Yeah. But God is so good because in all of this, we moved out. We finally had a place we could live in. And in that timing, I got born again. Yeah. And so... I went to a youth camp and received Jesus as my savior. So you find Christ then, you get eventually filled with the Holy Spirit, but actually God even used that abuse in your life 40 years later. Yes, he did. And even in your heart and helping you to understand other people who've gone through such difficulties. Talk about that. Well, and it gave me something because later when all this came up, I got sick uh, yes. from being overseas. And so I began to have quite a problem and a counselors came and talked to me 
And this all came out. Wow. You know. So you'd kind of stuffed it all those four yeah, years. Yeah, I had yeah. stuffed it under all those times. Wow. And I got free from it. And so, you know, I, I, I was a pastor's wife for many years. Yes. So I have compassion for people. I want them to be free. And I think a lot of these time, things we stuff under. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we'll just let Jesus heal. And this is what the Lord said to me. I was there all the time. Yeah. You thought I wasn't there. I was there all the time. So, you know, the Word of God, what God has yeah. done for me, I feel like I'm God's pet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you are too, actually. Yeah. Talk about the whole gender issue because doors were seemingly shut to you for many, many years when you felt the call of God on your life to, to speak, to teach, to go, to minister. And you just kind of endured through all of that until one day things changed. What changed? Well, what changed is I had a wonderful husband who always yes. encouraged me. And I wanted to reach the lost. And God said, if you want to reach the lost, you have to go where they are. They're not going to come to you. So I began home Bible studies. So over a cup of coffee, a cookie, and a Bible, <laughs> these women yes. began to be born again. And I had like 22 home Bible studies. Wow. Then we started one at night. And that it was in that process I got into media. So really you took the door that God made available, right. small right. as it was. Right. And you were faithful and you just kept on keeping on. You talk about so much more in your book, It's Not Over Until You Win. What do you want the takeaway to be for people who read your book? That we don't give up. Yeah. You know, that, you know, and here I am, I'm 88 and a half. I'm having more open doors because I'm an old woman <laughs> with the Islamic <laughs> world because they love old women. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, God. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, why do we give up? Why do we retire? Why don't we refire? Yeah. And so people say to me, when are you going to retire? I said, I am retired. What do you mean? You travel all the time. I said, I know. Retiring is doing what you like. Yes. <laughs> I am doing Having the what I like. That. Yeah. So I'm getting ready uh, to go to some more Muslim countries awesome. and have healing meetings. So. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to what God has. And I encourage people, don't give up. Don't sit in a rocking chair. Get up. Keep moving. <laughs> Keep moving. Go for it. What does Pat say? Use it or lose it, right? <laughs> exactly. That's right. Why do you think you see so many miracles? Why do I think you see so many miracles that you're, when you say we're going to do some miracle services, why do you think God moves so powerfully? Healing is the bread of the children. Yeah. And Healing, you know, I think sometimes people think, well, I don't have the gift of healing. But the word heals. Exactly. And healing attracts in Muslim countries and Hindu countries, you know, with people who don't believe in God, with atheists. So healing is not what you feel. Healing is who he is. Mm -hmm. And when you say, come and be healed, and I cover my head and dress like they do, they come and get healed and then they get born again Amen. and we have great follow-up. Listen, there's so much for you to find out about <laughs> Marilyn's life and her ministry in her brand new book. It's called, It's Not Over Until You Win. It's available nationwide. Thank you for what you do. Thank great you for this opportunity you. to share. <laughs>